Now, the use of less and less cash by Australians appears to be a choice made freely by consumers, but the problem is it's having side effects right down the line, all the way to the authorised secure trucks that transport cash from where it's printed to the big four banks that buy it from the Reserve Bank of Australia. Armaguard is the one and only operator left in that market, and it's in deep financial trouble with this side of its business. That's become a headache for the big four banks, but also for some remote country towns, which are finding it hard to even get their hands on cash in some cases. One Nation Senator Malcolm Roberts has been keeping an eye on the cash, cash drought for quite a while now. He joined us here in the studio a little earlier. Malcolm Roberts, welcome back to Afternoon Briefing. It's been a while, so we're glad you can join us. I know uh, through monitoring committees and other aspects of the parliament here, you've been monitoring the decline of cash and its repercussions for quite some time. I thought we might focus today on some reporting uh, about the possible decline of not one, but both cash in transit firms. These are the ones that officially transport it around the country. Armaguard is under financial stress. What happens if they go under? Well, then banks need to find a way to move the cash. And what, what I think is going on, Greg, is that, uh, well, first of all, Armaguard is owned by Lindsay Fox, who also owns other trucks, trucking businesses and also uh, airport airlines. Um, and uh, he's very close to Anthony Albanese, they were at, he, who was at his birthday party recently. So I think there's some, some questions that need to be asked about that. But what's happening is that Armaguard did a deal with uh, the Competition Consumer Commission just four months ago, saying they would... Prom they promised if they were amalgamated, they would stay. They would stay afloat for for quite some time. As a, four mono as a monopoly. As a monopoly. Yeah. And four months later, they're, they're talking about shutting up shop. So that that causes problems for the movement of cash, and the banks want to get the taxpayers on the hook. All right. So who would or should pick up the tab if Armaguard is struggling here? Is it? a government subsidy to them? Is it a renegotiated rate of payment from the big four banks? How does their financial predicament right now be alleviated? There are competitors uh, to Armaguard, and one of them is Commander Security. It's a small firm that can move cash around, but the banks refuse to deal with them. And the banks, I think, are, are even talking about debanking Commander Security. They're trying to wipe out com competition. The other thing to remember, Greg, is you've, you've taken a surprisingly strong stance for the banks. Uh, the banks have a social licence to fulfil. The banks operate in, in banking and they must provide legal tender. That's a fundamental to banking. If you're in banking, provide legal tender. And so what we're seeing is, is the banks trying to drive out cash uh, and, the, and they shut 2,000 branches in the last uh, six years and they've shut... Uh, 700 ATMs in the last 12 months. Mm. What they're trying to do is drive out cash so that you have to use the bank um, digital transfers, which means you get, incur fees, which they're missing at the moment, and also they miss your data. They want your data to build profiles about, about you. Sure. So in some country towns where bank branches are already thin or non-existent on the ground, I believe Australia Post has been playing a bit of a de facto role as a bank, uh, flying in cash, in some cases at their own expense, just to keep a town ticking over with cash. If we're thinking laterally about solutions here, could Australia Post come into play with a funded obligation to be, I suppose, the bank of last resort in a country town? Definitely. Uh, the, the Australia Post uh, licensed post offices are actually providing those services now, many banking services now, and they're doing it for fees that some of the banks won't disclose, others will disclose. So uh, we, ought, we would like to go beyond that and see a people's bank, because the original Commonwealth Bank, before it was privatised in 1995, uh, was back in 1910 when it was formed by the Fisher Labor government. It provided a vital service. It put our country on its feet and it provided enormous competition to the globalist banks that own our big four banks. Mm. And so what we need now is that same kind of uh, competition from a people's bank and the post office is one form of people's bank that could be extended not just to a post office with banking services but to a proper bank. Yeah, and uh, should they be funded because under their obligations at the moment, Australia Post are in effect funded to do certain things, but not the transportation of cash. I think if they're providing a service, they need to be, they need to be compensated for that service. They need to be funded. Mm. Um, and, and cash is a vital, vital um, service. 
the availability of cash is vital because it provides competition, it provides choice, it provides freedom to to escape the tyranny of the major banks. And as you've asked questions of different agencies in various committees on this over time, are you satisfied that they are focusing their attention on what looks like a pretty tight squeeze right now on, on Armour Guard? We're in an urgent uh, state of resolution, aren't we? Yes, uh, I think there, there's an underlying premise to your question too, Greg, and that is that cash is dying. It's not dying. It has, had, it has declined until the recent years. Uh, but we still have 30 million tr cash transactions for withdrawal of cash at the moment. A lot of people need cash. Uh, the Reserve Bank itself did a survey recently that said one in four uh, older Australians can't handle the internet. They, they must have cash. We also have $100 billion in cash uh, in the economy. And so cash is here to stay. And what we've seen is, as the, I've been on a, a committee to inquire into the closure of uh, bank branches in rural, rural uh, towns, and what we're seeing is a deliberate push. It is deliberate, Greg, to shut down bank branches and to shut down ATMs, to drive people towards cash. So it's people, the decline in cash until recently, when there's been an uptick in cash, the decline has been driven by the banks for their own short-term and okay. long-term money. So you're saying this isn't entirely market-led no. by, by we, the, <laughs> the customers. It's actually no. being driven by them. But that's irreversible, isn't it, this trend towards bank closures? Only last week in Western Australia, Bank West converted itself as a subsidiary of the Commonwealth Bank of Australia into virtually a digital-only bank. And we've had people on this program, Malcolm, suggest to us that that is a bit of a test bed for where others will certainly follow. I think the banks will try to do whatever they can to, to minimise their costs and to maximise their revenue. But we must remember that banking is, a, is an essential service. Uh, banks should not be controlling it. At the moment, people... That's, so what we need is banks that provide a service and fulfil their social licence. They have a, an obligation to, uh, to mm. satisfy customers all over the country, and that's what we need. And if they can't do it, then let's have a people's bank, like the Commonwealth Bank used to be. All right, well, we'll leave you to uh, keep an eye on all things related to cash, gold and the like, Malcolm Roberts, in your work as a senator. And uh, thank you once again for uh, joining us today on this yeah, emerging story around Armagard. Thanks so much. You're welcome, Greg. Pleasure to be here. All right, well, we're pretty much done with afternoon briefing for today.